Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Solutions. Till now, we've done different ways of expressing concentrations of solutions. We did the mass percentage, we did the volume percentage, we talked of parts per million, we spoke about mole fraction, then we talked about molarity and molality. These were the different ways of expressing concentrations that are there in your syllabus. There is one more way how we can express the concentration of a solution and that is normality. In this video, I'm going to tell you about this way of expressing the concentration that is normality. The reason for doing it in a separate video is one, that it is not included in the NCRT syllabus in details. Two, that it is slightly more complex than the other ways. But it's not very difficult. It's nothing that you can't master. So I'll be giving this video and one more video to do numerical problems and normality to help you understand this way of expression too. So what is normality? Normality, first of all, is expressed by the symbol N. And its unit is also written as N. And the unit actually, like in molarity, we show molarity by capital M, which means it is moles per liter. Similarly, we show normality or we write the unit of normality as capital N and its unit actually is gram equivalence per liter. Now, this is a new term. So, you, as I explain it, you'll understand what it means. Normality, the equation, this is the normality equation. It is equal to normality is equal to the number of gram equivalence upon volume in milliliters into 1000. Do you see this? It's actually unnecessarily um, complicated by putting this 1000 down because usually the volume is given in milliliters. But actually, if you really have to simplify the equation and understand it, it is normality is equal to the number of gram equivalents divided by the volume of the solution in liters. Then you, you can ignore the thousand. Actually, the thousand is only because of the milliliters. What was the equation for molarity? It was the number of moles of the solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters. So this is nothing but the only difference between molarity and normality is that normality is the number of gram equivalents of the solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters, right? Or as it is given in the textbook, it is volume in milliliters into 1000. Now, from this, what do you, how do you calculate these gram equivalents or what is that gram equivalent? The number of gram equivalents is nothing but the mass of the substance upon the equivalent weight. It is the mass of the substance that is if you're making a solution. Uh, let us say you're making a solution of sodium hydroxide. So the mass of sodium hydroxide that you take, how much of sodium hydroxide would you be taking? That mass is WB. And divided by equivalent weight. Now the question arises, what is this equivalent weight? Equivalent weight is actually the weight of a substance that is equivalent to how much of it uh, is, how much of it reacts as acid or base. There, is a different way, there are different ways of calculating the equivalent weight of substances depending on the nature of the substance. If you have acids, then you have one formula for the for calculating the equivalent weight. For bases, you have another formula, and for salts, you have another formula. So we cate we know we categorize all uh, chemical substances into three types: acids, bases, and salts. And therefore, we'll have these three: that is, acids, bases, and salts. And you'll have you can find out the equivalent weights of all of these by these different formulae. What is the difference in their formulae? The molecular mass of the solute remains the same. It is the denominator in each case which is different. In the case of acids, the equivalent weight is equal to the molecular mass upon the basicity of the acid. What is basicity of an acid? The number of hydrogen ions or replaceable hydrogen ions in a molecule or in one mole of an acid is known as its basicity. In the case of bases, for example, let us say HCl. HCl has one replaceable hydrogen ion, therefore its, ba its basicity is 1. So you write the molecular mass of HCl divided by 1. If you have H2SO4, it has two replaceable hydrogen ions, therefore its basicity is 2. So you write the, to calculate the equivalent weight of H2SO4, you write the mass of H2SO4 divided by the basicity that is 2. 
So now you come to bases. What is how you calculate the equivalent weight of a base? The equivalent weight of a base is described as the molecular mass of the base divided by its acidity. Now what is acidity of a base? As in the case of acids, we say the number of replaceable H positive ions is the basicity of an acid. In the same way, the number of replaceable OH negative ions in a base are, make its acidity. So you will write the molecular mass of the base upon the, the acidity of the base. For example, you have sodium hydroxide. So you write down the mass of sodium hydroxide divided by the acidity of the base. How many OH negative ions does sodium hydroxide have? Any OH has only one OH negative. So it will be divided by one. Calcium hydroxide would be, you write down the mass of calcium hydroxide divided by two because calcium hydroxide has two replaceable OH negative ions. So that is how you find out the, ba the basicity and acidity of acids and bases and that is how you calculate the equivalent weight. So what about the salts? In the case of salts you have a cation and an anion. The cation is not H positive and the anion is not OH negative. So in the case of salts we take the cation and whatever is the charge on the cation that is whatever is the positive charge that becomes the denominator. So we say we write down the molar mass of the salt and divided by the total positive valency. That how, what is it, the positive charge on the cation that decide the total positive valency would give you the denominator and that is how you would calculate the equivalent weight of a salt. Do you remember when we did uh, molarity, molality, I told you that in the case of molality, where molality was the number of moles of the solute divided by the mass of the solvent in kgs. So it did not depend on volume. Similarly, mole fraction does not depend on volume. Therefore, uh, these quantities or these values of molality and mole fraction were independent of temperature. But molarity was the number of moles of solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters. So since it was dependent, it had volume in the denominator. So the, the value molarity depends on volume and the volume of a substance changes with temperature. If you warm up a solution, the volume increases. Therefore, the volume, these values, that is normality, molarity, these are values that depend on temperature. So they are temperature dependent. So I would like to specify here again that just as in molarity, in normality also, or in the uh, volume percent, or mass over volume percent ratios, wherever you have volume, the quantity that you're calculating becomes dependent on temperature. So we say normality depends on volume, therefore it varies with temperature. The, the same solution will have a different normality at different temperatures. Now coming back to these, let us take a few examples and see uh, what is the basicity and the, how do you calculate the gram equivalence. Uh, sorry, how do you uh, calculate the basicity and the, norm uh, the acidity of bases? Basicity, as I explained, is the number of replaceable hydrogen ions. If you have HCl, hydrochloric acid, it has one H positive in it. So there is one hydrogen ion that is replaceable, therefore its basicity is one. In H2SO4, you have two replaceable hydrogen ions, therefore it has a basicity of two. And in H3PO4, you have three replaceable hydrogen ions and therefore its basicity is three. But with phosphate ion, we have two other acids, H3PO4, we have H3PO3 and we have H3PO2 also. So in those cases, what is the, in, in, and if you look at the formula, all of them H3PO4, H3PO3 and H3PO2, all of them have these hydrogens and we get a feeling that all of them should be the replaceable hydrogen ions. Therefore, the basicity of all these three phosphate acids, acids of the phosphate ion, should be three. While actually it is three for H3PO4, it is two for H3PO3 and it is one, the basicity is one for H3PO2. What is the reason for it? The hydrogen which is connected directly to phosphorus does not get replaced. The replaceable, when we say what is basicity, it is equal to the number of replaceable hydrogen ions or how many protons can it donate. 
In this case, in H3PO4 is this structure. You have phosphorus bound to oxygen and three of these bonds are with oxygen and the hydrogen is connected to the oxygen. So all these three hydrogens which are connected to the oxygen can be ionized and can give H positive. But any hydrogen which is directly connected to phosphorus would not get ionized because the electronegativity difference would not be as much. And since it will not form H positive ion and leave the solution, therefore this hydrogen is not available for protonation and therefore does not contribute towards the acidic character of the acid or does not contribute towards the basicity of the acid. So when you have H, 3 PO3. In this, you have three oxygens out of which only two are attached to hydrogens. Therefore, you have only two replaceable hydrogen ions, and the basicity of H3PO3 is 2. The basicity of H3PO4 is 3, H3PO2 uh, 3 is 2, and H3PO2 would be there is only one hydrogen which is attached to oxygen. These two hydrogens are directly connected to phosphorus. Therefore, it has only one replaceable hydrogen ion, the one that is connected to hydrogen, and therefore it has a basicity of one. Interesting? Now here you have oxalic acid. Oxalic acid is, you have these two hydrogens, do you see here, connected to the oxygens, which are replaceable. Both of them can contribute to the acidic character. Therefore, in oxalic acid, the basicity of this acid is 2. And in acetic acid, what is the basicity? The three hydrogens which are connected to carbon, they cannot be replaced, they cannot be removed in the form of H positive ions. So, it is only this hydrogen which is available for protonation. Only that gets protonated. Therefore, the basicity of this acid, that is acetic acid, is only 1. Then let us come to the acidity of bases. Now, why are we trying? Why are we focusing on these terms? Because the molecular mass you already know how to calculate. In order to come to calculate the equivalent weight, you must know the basicity. You must the uh, concept of basicity, acidity, and the total positive charge on a cation should be clear to you. So, in the case of bases, um, you have the acidity of bases, which means it is the number of replaceable OH negative ions. If you have a base like potassium hydroxide, it has only one OH negative ion which can be replaced, therefore it has an, it has an acidity of 1. The base barium hydroxide has two replaceable OH negative ions, so it has an acidity of 2. AlOH3 has three replaceable OH negative ions, therefore it has a, an acidity of 3. And in the case of salts, all you have to focus on is the positive charge on the cation. Sodium chloride has Na has one positive charge, therefore it's uh, the denominator in that case would be one. The positive charge is one. Barium has a charge of two positive, therefore it will be the denominator here would be two. The, and what is there in the numerator is the molar mass. You'll calculate the molar mass of each of these compounds and write down there uh, the charge on the uh, cation. In aluminum chloride, it is three. Now let us assume that we want to prepare a solution. And we want to prepare a solution of um, yeah. Here I want to simplify this. I'll write this as liters, and I can remove the thousand. Okay, that simplifies it kind of. So you would say, or we could say, normality is equal to the weight of the solute divided by the molar mass of the solute, the molecular mass or the molar mass of the solute divided by its basicity or acidity. So we write that here, the basicity or acidity or the charge on the cation and divided by the volume of solution in liters, right? So that is the normality. Now let us assume we want to create, we want to prepare a solution of 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide solution. 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide solution is what we want to prepare. In, and we want to prepare, how much of it? We want to prepare 500 ml of this. Yes. We want to prepare a 500 milliliter solution of sodium hydroxide, 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide. In order to do this, how do we do? 
how do we uh, calculate? We know the normality. We know normality is equal to the mass of the substance that you take. In this case, what is the solute sodium hydroxide? So the mass of sodium hydroxide that you have to take upon the molar mass, the molar mass of NaOH into, and now what is divided by, actually it is divided by, molar mass, we are calculating the equivalent weight, would be the weight upon molar mass, equivalent weight upon equivalent weight, and equivalent weight is molar mass upon the, this, since it is a base, it will be the acidity of the base. And since it is sodium hydroxide, what will be the acidity of this base? It is 1. So divided by 1, or I can write that divided here into 1, divided by the volume of the solution in liters. So it is 500 ml, so it will become, either you write 500 ml and then multiply this by 1000, or you could just write uh, 0.5 liters, right? Either way, you would have arrived at this. So normality is given to us how much, what is the normality that we want? It is 0 0.5 is equal to the WB, how much of sodium hydroxide we need to take, we have to find out upon what is the molar mass of sodium hydroxide? It is 40 because the mass of sodium is 23, oxygen is 16 and hydrogen is 1. So 23 plus 16 plus 1 would give you a 40, mass of 40 into 1 which is already the basicity upon 500 into 1000 or you could write into 1000 or 0.5 whatever so this could also be written as 0.5 so now you have to calculate wb so what would wb we will equal to wb or the mass of sodium hydroxide that you have to take wb would be equal to you take all of this up here so wb would be equal to 0 0.5 into 40 into this could have been 0 0.5 into 0.5 right and when you calculate this all of this comes out to be equal to 10 grams this would be 10 grams it is 40 grams per mole and the mass you have to find out in grams you'll get the answer in grams this means you need 10 grams of sodium hydroxide pellets solid sodium hydroxide you have to weigh 10 grams of solid sodium hydroxide so how will you prepare the solution you'll take a volumetric flask which has a measure of about, whose measure is 500 ml, okay? Here, the measurement is 500 ml. You will take sodium hydroxide pellets, that is 10 grams of sodium hydroxide pellets. You will weigh them, you will put them in the flask, and then you will add a minimum amount of water, distilled water, and you will shake the flask. You will shake the flask till all of this uh, solute, that is sodium hydroxide, gets dissolved in it. And once all of it is dissolved, then slowly you'll start adding more distilled water to it and bring it up to a 500 ml mark. Here, although it is not related to the topic, but since we are doing preparation of a solution here, whenever you have a liquid that is transparent, have you noticed when you have liquid in a test tube, water in a test tube, the water is not like this, is not flat like this, it has a meniscus. It's like a curved surface. So if the liquid is transparent, you look at the lower meniscus. And if the liquid is translucent or kind of opaque, you use the upper meniscus. So this is the level that you look at at the 500 ml mark and or you would say it will be somewhat like this. And the moment it reaches the 500 ml mark, the lower meniscus, you stop adding more water. You prepare 500 milliliters of 0 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide solution. So this was normality. In the next video, I'll solve a few numerical problems based on normality before proceeding with our next topic. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.